official time. So it's officially 5.30. Let's start. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we didn't decide last time what a quorum is. I suggest that a quorum is seven. That's one over half of the members of the committee. But it's the committee's decision to decide on what they want to do about that. Sounds good. Let the record read that seven is a quorum. We could have some other comments there, Amber, you know. The floor is yours. Yeah. The quorum means it can mean a number of different things. It could be a quorum if we choose to vote. We'd have to have at least seven people present to take a vote, for instance. A quorum would mean we had enough of us to have a real discussion out of the 12. So I don't know what we have to decide, in part, how we're going to make decisions. And that will raise the question, perhaps, of what a quorum is. Uh, OK, we can defer that. Sure. Uh, and we'll come to that in, in just a minute, I think, or try to deal with that. So we're in we're order. Uh, we have some people that hadn't been at a meeting before, so let's have those people introduce themselves. Presumably, we know them, but I think it's a good idea. All of us around this kind of loop here introduced ourselves last time. So people that weren't here, if you'll tell us who you are. And My name is Mike Kirby. I'm reporting for the 26 readers of Kirby on the Loose. That's certified. That's certified. I have a count. count on that. <laughs> you, you have come to the right place because they're on the loose as well. <laughs> City Councilor Paul Spector would be. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge, and the reason why us councilors weren't here last time because we had a City Council meeting. Yeah, no, no, we understand that. We understand that. I'll so, just let well, you know. I would ask you, did, did you make us official last time or not? Yes, we did. Ah, good. So I thanked them. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I said, please. So members, we are now official. Last time we were uh, quasi-official, but now we're official. Uh -huh. So we can get our badges out and put our hats on and we're, we're, we're good to go. President Rock Ward 3. Right. We need to say that this is going to be recorded, I guess, for candid camera and other purposes as well, <laughs> if people want to uh, see this. For the North Street Association. Right. So we need to tell everybody that. Anything you say can and will be held against you at another time. We have the record here. Uh, <clears throat> last time, Jim. Uh, kindly said that he would act as scribe. He put the minutes out for review. I think he sent a copy to everybody. So if there are some changes you'd like to make or revisions, now's the time, I think, to get your hand up. What's the, what I missed that? The minutes. Uh, minutes. Approval of the minutes. Did you get an agenda item? Or a, a, oh, okay. So, yeah, we're, we're at number four. I do have a couple of questions. They may be procedural, so I just need some clarification. Uh, last week when we met, there were more people at the task force sitting at the table than there are on the task force, uh, specifically members of the Board of Public Works. So when I sat down, I was confused as to who actually was on the task force. So I was, I was wondering if that was going to be a problem going forward if more people from the public came to the meeting and saw people that weren't on the task force who was voting and what part of the vote there was. So I was wondering if we should actually only have members of the task force sitting at the table. Well, yes, we can do that. Just, and I just think, answer the question. Uh, I think tonight what you see here is everyone except Jim and Doug, and Doug have a vote. So we can either give them different color uh, name tags, or we can ask them to sit at the back of the bus. There are a number of things we can do here to, to uh, avoid that confusion, and I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Paul? Well, I'm going to save this for public comment, but I'm glad you called on me because part of my public comment is to be more interactive with the public and they recognize. Um, one of the things I'm going to say in a few minutes, but I may not need to say again, is I would hope you would run this more. Um, more informal, so it can give and take, than what happened, say, at the city council meeting. It was part of the idea when we first designed this. And part of that would be, if you notice, many city council subcommittee com committee meetings, that there are voting members and non-voting members all sitting at the table. Um, and you can identify that if more of the public comes. 
Um, and so part of, I'm glad you recognized me, but once public comment comes, I have a few other suggestions that you may or may not want to take as part of running this meeting. Um, and I'll give you some of our thoughts when we first, on the joint committee, um, decided to uh, move forward and, and create this ad hoc committee. I'd like to move to accept the minutes as presented. Uh, I'll second that. And, and, and I'd like to make a comment at this point. I, a view I have is this. I don't know that we need to make motions all the time. If we could do things by consensus, I think that would be a good thing. If someone wants to make a motion and second it and vote on it, I have no problem with that. But, but I don't think we need to run this as a, uh, uh, a meeting such that we have to make motions on everything we do. Now, maybe our counselors will disagree with that, and they can give us some guidance as we go along in the meeting. But uh, I, I, would, I would propose that we try to do this on this consensus basis as much as we can. If there comes a point someone or several want to have a formal vote, then we should do so. And I think if we let the record read that that's how we're going to proceed, we've met the spirit of the open meeting law so long as we tell people how we're going to operate. And if we can get agreement around this table, I suggest we get our scribe to record that, that do things as consensus as much as possible. If someone really feels strongly about it, make a motion, we'll second it, and, and we'll have discussion, and we'll vote on it. I think that's a fine approach for us to take for our routine business as much as we can. That's a great thing to do. And just to respond to your concern, you're right, last week it was confusing because you didn't know who these people were. I think we should encourage them to sit at the table with us as well as anybody else, but we need to make sure that people understand that who are the non-voting members at the table. So, um, well, maybe I'll get us some voting caps for next meeting, <laughs> and everybody who can vote will have a cap. I think we do that, that by a show of hands at the start of the meeting. Um, and before we go with Alex's, I just wanted, if David if he had, said he had several comments, were they related to the, to the minutes themselves? Or just yes, they were. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. So have you got more you didn't tell us? Or? I do. Go. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. And that. So, um, so I do need to have that resolved that we are going to address who is voting and who is not voting. Uh, I wasn't sure if we had a consensus on that. Uh, there was some talk, but I think going forward, if these minutes are going to be recorded for the public, that we need to be clear of what's stated. And I'm not clear myself. If that's what we're going to do, a voting cap or a colored chart, it's good to joke about it, but it was a, it was no, a question. I'll, I just I'll, need an answer. I, 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 will, I will figure out a mechanism, whether it's a colored name tag or a, a voting tent or a flag or something. I'll, I'll have some way so people will know, okay. or you can... You can show that I'm, you're the, uh, okay. we probably won't issue uh, photo ID cards, but we'll, we'll think of something that will, you, it'll be clear to everybody, Thank okay? Thank you very much. Jim could bring some road cones, maybe something. <clears throat> yeah, we could wear <laughs> those. Could you, give you guys the green. men working socks? Yes. Yes. Have yes. Thought yes. Yes. We don't have much of a budget. That may not work. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll think of something so it'll be Thank clear. You. Uh, and, and, and another point for clarity is that we sent out an email to the task force and we copied a, uh, a number of people who aren't on the task force. Is that proper procedure or is that uh, another informal part of this committee? Just trying to figure out who's getting the information because if it's public knowledge, we can, we can increase that to everyone in the city, everyone in the country, or why are we copying people who aren't on the task force? Again, no disrespect, but a procedural issue I'd like to just get cleared up at the end. I think that's a perfect example of best practice, trying to be as transparent and widely visible as we possibly can. And I bet the, uh, many of the other people who got the emails who you didn't know were people who signed up at the last meeting, which was, would have been Fred, and some members of the joint committee. So I think whoever happens to get I'm saying we want to spread the word as widely as we can. Thank you very much. So as, as other people come in, are they going to be offered the chance to be on the email thread? If they want uh, well, the minutes are posted, or will be posted publicly. They haven't been posted yet, but assuming we consent to have them published, anybody can see them anyway. Uh, 
Um, Jim. I probably was somebody who was sending email out to people that went to a variety of different parties. So I sent two, two email out, I think. Um, one that went to the task force, which was the minutes, and then other people that were at the task force meeting that were staff, uh, Terry Colleen, who was there and made a presentation, um, other people at Public Works. I think I may have sent out another email as well that went to some of the counselors because I used the list that Mayor Medora had sent out with the task force agenda for tonight. But it's a good question. As a matter of course, I'm going to be distributing information to everybody on the task force, and I am distributing information to really anybody that wants it. Um, to make the work workload not crazy for me, we're trying to get everything that we have up on the website. So the minutes, anything that gets sent out, we want to post so we can direct people to the website so they can find it. So I'd rather not get into a, you know, developing some kind of formal email distribution list from my from my own perspective. Although if that's what the committee wants, I'll, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Um, I did send send an email to Fred with a meeting agenda just so he knew the time and place because he was at the last meeting. Um, but really, I'll take whatever direction you want. But if you're trying to, if people are interested, I'm trying to focus them to go on the website where we have a lot of the information. Um, and otherwise, if people are comfortable. I can just send things directly to people on the task force and email or however things are doing. Alex? I, I think that we ought to, I'd like to make it a practice to have a sign up sheet that anybody who signs up and gives us our email, that we send out our emails to them. I think the wider the information can be spread, the more that's almost, I would say, 50% of the function of this committee is to explain the need uh, and the solutions. And if you can find interested people who want to be part of the conversation, definitely. I agree with both what you said, Alex, and what uh, Bob said is that what I'm concerned with is people come in and they want to be on the email thread, and we're not offering it, but we're offering it to a select few that that puts us in a way that's not transparent or accessible to everybody that wants to be. So how do you how do you give it to some and not give it to others? And that was my point. Uh, so again, if there's an answer to that, I'm not clear what what we're agreeing to, or if other people have some comment. Um, if I can just throw one more other variable into this. We had a discussion about this at BPW a couple months back, and we have members of the city council, maybe they have a different interpretation, but our understanding from the city's lawyers is that group emails amongst members of the BPW are subject to the open meeting laws. Whether that applies to this group, I don't know, um, but I think that that's, that's right. So for all intents and purposes, that, that material is subject to, is subject to being submitted to the, to the minutes and for, for public disclosure. So I think that having people are already on the list is, is falls within that sort of, that, that design. I'm happy to send email to people if we get lists for Alex's request. Um, I really have no problem with it if we can get, I already know Fred's email and the folks here, um, I can get Mike's email and send things out to people to the extent that I took an action item here for myself. I'll create or get created a login <coughs> sheet. Next meeting we have, we'll have a login sheet and we'll put it at the desk or the table or wherever it is. And when people come in, we'll ask them to put their John Hancock on it and, and their email address or wherever they want to get smoke signals or however they want to get it. We'll <laughs> beat we'll the figure out something. Yeah. yeah. Have one more point? Sure. Thank you. But does that your. Yes, thank you. Yep, yep. Thank you very much. Uh, in, in terms of the discussion of the presentation, uh, again, with no disrespect to Jim, thank you for making the notes. And I'm doing this mostly for my clarity. And if I uh, misunderstood or mislistened, uh, some of the comments in the discussion of the presentation specifically speak to generally agreed. Uh, the task force agreed to certain things. And I don't specifically recalling that we were agreeing to anything last week. I think we could say that we generally heard things, but I don't think that uh, we had enough of a, a mission or a charge at the initial meeting to be agreeing to anything. We couldn't even agree to what our task necessarily was. So in terms of, I don't want to pick apart Jim's work. That's not my intent. But uh, if this is public information, and I've already displayed this to a couple of people, and they said, well, you already were agreeing to certain things, and I couldn't agree to that, those statements. So I don't agree personally, but if I miss something, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm open to any interpretation that I may have missed. Can we wordsmith this? 
I'm happy to make any changes. And, and, and send it back out to you? And with the sense of what we heard here? Well, since we have everybody here, I'm happy to make the change. Um, I, I did use the word uh, generally agreed a couple of times and the word read another time. So I'm happy to put the word discuss in or any word that the task force feels accurately reflects what happened that night. So it was, uh, it was discussed. Is that, is, is that a soft acceptable? Well, this is that? where I think we're going to start getting into problems because we're not doing motions. We're all kind of throwing yeah. things out and everybody's kind of agreeing, but because we're not making motions and taking votes, we're not getting definite Agree, you know, we're not either all agreeing yeah. or disagreeing. That's my feeling anyway. And my concern to that, Ruth, is that we may work well that way, but it's the perception the public will have, so our transparency becomes less transparent because they will be unsure how we operate. So that that is why I'm bringing these up. And the only counter I would make that day is we're fortunate to have there's a recording of our meetings, which should give a much better sense than even the best minutes. Correct. Good. Written yeah. minutes. Yeah, but here we are. It's, did we definitely agree or kind of agree or toss it around? Whereas if we yeah. had a motion and even tabled the motion while we discussed it more, you know, there's nothing definite lines. It's just kind of all, you know. Paul, do you want to speak that now, or do you want to speak to that? Your former uh, city councilors, you guys are getting a little rusty. I think you need to help out here. I think this is the point of having um, motions that are more formal. So I think you're making. Sorry, I don't remember the name. Hi, David. I think you're making a good point, and you're saying I'd like to make. So if you guys can help because you've been with this a long time. And maybe we're all getting old, and we can't. So he's making a friendly amendment to the minutes, and I, I would encourage you to stick to. I think being formal will help streamline. So he's making a friendly amendment to the minutes, and he's saying, I'd like to change a couple of words, which shouldn't require, because otherwise I'm afraid you will get into sending all the minutes back around, looking at all of it, where I think he's making a couple of word changes. That you can say a friendly amendment has been made to, and you make it very clear what it is, and I think you did. You said, I changed the language to, and you mentioned it, but make it more formally, have a second. My guess would be everybody would say, that sounds pretty good, and vote on it. I'm a little concerned that you're going to get really bogged down, and it'll be a streamline. I think, Ruth, that's what you were suggesting, that the formality of the process will actually help in some ways yeah. to make a motion, move it forward. I agree with that completely. Well, okay, so let's let's go back around this. And um, do I hear the <laughs> sense of, around this table? No, wow. no, this, this wait, this wait a minute. Uh, do I hear the sense around the table is that you want to make motions? Uh, and, and get them approved, because there is, let's just do that. Uh, as people know last time, I'm not a person with great patience, and if we can agree to that quickly, let's just get on with that, and that's the way we'll conduct our business. As chair, I really don't care. It's, you know, I view mine as to facilitate it, but to move it along. And, and if that's <coughs> what everybody wants to do. Uh, and with that, Alex? Well, we are in that process. I made the motion, uh, Ruth uh, seconded, and the and like and this is the discussion. Yeah. And I really appreciate its uh, careful reading of this because when I read it now, it's it's not right, and so we need to amend the minutes. And I would uh, I would I would suggest that we amend the well. Do you want to make an amendment? No, go ahead. That we say that the uh, the, the city believes. The people who presented for the city believe that an annual budget in the order of $2 million will be necessary. If we don't agree to anything, they presented, that is something they presented. Initial budget. Initial budget. Well, we certainly didn't agree to that, but, but they, that's what they said. So that's my motion. And, and you still want to second it, Ruth? As amended. As amended. Yeah. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? Well, but I mean, it goes all the way through that. Uh, the task force didn't agree that we would have been sure to put the need. It's, it's complicated. I mean, uh, but I really agree. I, you know, I don't think that we, we, we 
we, we didn't generally agree to anything, even it was generally agreed by the task force. They, they were not charged with develop, developing a specific budget. We didn't agree to that. So we didn't agree to anything. We discussed it. We just, we <laughs> yeah. just brought we were, so, we were, we so just your amendment discussion. is just on the one paragraph or all what, the paragraphs or, or well, I can play, you know, if you can <laughs> you know, I don't have the exact wording, but I guess the, where it says the task force agreed, I would say that uh, as presented by this by uh, the Board of Public Works or the, their representatives, that a new source of revenue would be needed. So how do you want it to read? Well, that's what I'd like to say that the uh, that the um, as presented by Terry Calhane, uh, he estimated that the initial uh, obligation to the city would be two million dollars a year, and that a new source of revenue would be needed. I second that. No, no, wait a minute. We get we get one second over here. Uh, this, is, this is a new. Yeah, this, this is, is an additional amendment. We don't want to fold them all together. You want to do a paragraph by paragraph? <laughs> it would be better if we did that. If we did it all at once. Look, you guys we already, did, we already did the first one. So. Well, okay. So you want to second that? I would. I would suggest that we get them all laid out. Dave, you initially had suggested, and I think Jim agreed that maybe we just changed. Could I step in now and get out? Here. Thank you. I think for the for the ease of this well, to start is that if we agreed as a group that we took out agreed and said and put in discussed, right? That that would simplify the changes and that that covers everything that we did generally is to discuss all of these things. And then that makes sense. That, that leaves it general and it was discussion. There was no agreement. There was no vote. There was no other. So Just under no. Under nine, yeah. Under nine. And so we we have a motion on the floor here by Alex, and, and we have mm -hmm. some. Is, are you willing to accept his uh, commentary here in your motion, or do you want him to make the motion? Uh, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy. I, I, the, I think that you know what we're talking about. Well, now you guys wanted to be formal, so now let's let's. Make well, then we. I suppose we should write it down. It should be a written uh, amendment. Yeah, so let's make it. Do, do we want to do that? Do we? Uh, you know, as a practical matter, I, this is. I shouldn't maybe. I shouldn't be talking, but I. You know, I think it's going to be a, a, a mix of formality and informality. That uh, where there's consensus, we want to move on. Uh, where there are real differences, we want to record them. Yeah. Paul? And, and I think I, I need, because this was my, this is basically a, was my child to create this committee. I feel like I might have created a monster. <laughs> so let me just say, guys, this is pretty simple stuff. And I'm really looking at the two councils. We've been through this a lot. We have them that you've been through this a hundred times. Help these folks out because they haven't had to sit through boring hours of council meeting. You've learned something. Basically on something like this, it seems like there's consensus here. You all voted unanimously. You can say something like, I make an amendment to change the board's agreement that David brought up, and that that's a friendly that's amendment. Is any, every, do I have a second? Yes. Is everyone in agreement? So it is formal, but it can also be informally done and moved forward. And I think it's up to, I'm really looking at the two counselors who have been through this a hundred times to help you guys on that. So it's neither totally formal nor completely informal. It is a formal motion. So it's written down, voted on, but it can be done. Did you, did you raise your hand? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Agreed to discussion. There are three spots. Generally discussed. Generally discussed. So, so, so David make the motion. makes the motion. Second. And Dan wants to second it. Now, do you want to vote by raising your hands or say aye or how do you want to do it? You're the chair. Hmm? You're the chair. Well, it's your meeting. I don't care. You just you wanted all to do this formally. All, 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 all in favor. All in favor. Raise your hand. There you go. All Opposed. Time. Abstain? Recuse? 
It's like unanimous to me. <laughs> and we're underway. Thank you very much. Did we accept the minutes? That's the first half hour. No, so, we, so the minutes are accepted. <laughs> As amended. Accept it as amended. Uh, so now we have public comment. Uh, and Paul is. Uh, you don't public comment. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've already made my public comment. Thanks. I want to thank you all for being on this, especially as you know, I watch you going through some of those struggles that familiar with it. So thanks, thanks a lot for being on this committee and being willing to serve. Um, a couple of things. One is, you mentioned about where people sit. I think that is important for the public to know who's voting and not. Uh, my, some suggestions, just as a member of the public, not even as a city council member, but just if I came in, if there was one table that was, you know, members who are not voting members, that would identify visually for me as well and would be helpful. The other thing I would suggest is I think architecture is very important when you come in. So right now, for example, I'm speaking to some people's backs, not your problem, but I would make sure the room is always set up so there's a sense that if someone's coming to speak before the public, that they're not in a position where a couple of members have to turn around. Um, I would also suggest that you not have the three-minute formality that we have in the city council. That's one of the few committees in the city that we have the three-minute rule. Um, and that we also are not allowed to interact with the public. I actually think, in when we at the ad hoc committee first thought about this, and I think Alex is right, I think you commented that a lot of this work is about a conversation with the public, it's about bringing them in. I would actually suggest that you establish a rule where people are allowed to speak until, at the discretion of the chair or others, you feel they're becoming redundant or they're not speaking to the issue, you can ask them to wrap it up. But there is where I would be less formal. I would also think that during the process of the meeting, there be more give and take, that if you want to recognize somebody, if a member of the public, and you already did that this evening with me, which might not have been part of your rules last week or not, you have a public comment session, I was probably totally out of order um, in raising my hand. But I would actually encourage you at, for most of the meeting to allow that to happen and to see what happens. You can always, I'm encouraging you, you can always change your rules. If you find at one of the meetings, which I hope you have, you have a real big public turnout, and people are really interested, and you find that it becomes cumbersome, at that point you can reevaluate. But I think as long as it's a smaller group coming, and the people who do come are very interested, whether they're counselors or members of the public or members of the press, I think then I would encourage you to let it be a more open thing, and that when someone stands up, that there's the ability to ask them questions. I know my three minutes is probably winding down, but um, a couple of the other things, because I spoke to a couple of counselors, was um, about familiar, making sure you're familiar with, and this came at the council meeting last week, you're familiar with the ethics laws of the state of Massachusetts. It came up and we debated it, and it would have held up for a number of weeks, giving the formal uh, charge to this committee from the city council that you were legitimate was that you were all going to have to take the same test we take, which is on online. It takes about an hour or so if you actually really take it, um, which is the ethics, uh, all the ethics about being on a city committee or commission or the city council. I would encourage you, so we decided you did not have to do that, um, but I would encourage everybody here to at least read through the state ethics, and I was advised that I should at least say that, maybe you already said that last week, and also to get an understanding, and I think, you again, you have a number of people here who know this, about what are some of the rules of the open meeting law, so that everybody familiarize themselves with that. Um, the other thing was, there was a question of, well, where, where is this going? What was the, when this was kind of passed to you, what's going to come from this? Where are you going with this information? Um, it was my understanding, in part as one of the key creators of the committee, that your recommendations would come back to us on the joint city council DPW committee. That, that, that you are an ad hoc committee from that committee. That we would then take your recommendations, they may be formal votes, they may be a majority and minority report, uh, they may be very specific, they may be just general comments, we don't know. We're hoping it can be as specific as possible that your recommendations are extremely specific about what you think we should do about these issues.
but that's really up to you. They would come to us. At that point, we would then move them to the DPW and the BPW, and they would there then, of course, anything would end up going back to the city council. So I hope that's clear in terms of where it would go. We do plan, so one of the questions that also came um, from someone here was like, should you be doing a lot of community outreach? I would say as much as you could possibly do. But just so you know, we've already had two public forums. We plan to have many more. So this is not, we hope a lot of the public comes to your meetings. We will, I will do my best. I'm going to send out an email uh, whenever you guys let me know about your next meeting. I have about 200 names in Ward 2. I'm going to encourage other counselors to do it. I hope people show up. <coughs> After this, we will also then, at both the Joint Committee and I'm sure at the DPW, there will be more public meetings. As well as the City Council may again, we sponsored the last two public forums. And I could imagine us doing, after the process of your recommendations coming to the Joint Committee, going to the DPW, that the City Council would once again, especially if there's not been big turnout at these meetings, that the City Council once again would hold not just one, but a number of, meet of public forums on the topic before it ends up going back to the City Council for the more formal procedure and process. Um, stop me at the three minutes. Um, the other question that a, a couple of members of the So, Paul, I have a question yes. about that. So, if that's so, what happens, once we report to the Joint Committee, how long is the minimum time you think it would take to go through the whole Joint Committee DPW City Council process? Well, after watching you guys tonight, knowing, <laughs> I've, been, knowing I've been through this a lot, it's, it's really hard to say. Um, Could it easily be six months, no? By the time it got to the city council yeah. and we had public forums, it could easily be yeah. six months. Let me just get, maybe it would be helpful to have a little bit of background. When we thought, and we, there's, there was still some time pressure, that we thought we were going to have a mandate coming down, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, it seemed a few months ago that the mandate on some of these things was coming down from the federal government quicker than we imagined. That was the impression I think we all had. There seems to be a little more lag time, perhaps, and you can correct this if I'm wrong, but at least from what a few people have told me. Even at that, and at that point, we started looking at this, and the, the, I spoke with the mayor about what would it take if, for example, one of the things that was decided after a long process was there would be some kind of fee structure added to the water bill. Let's just supposing that would happen. To put that in place, to actually, once it was even decided, and then get it in place, we're looking at an absolute minimum amount of time just to do the work that it takes to do the practical stuff. Minimum would be six months, and a few people said it would probably take a year. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the reason why we need to move this along, even though I know a couple of you have said, well, we've spoken to the EPA, and the mandates are not coming down that quickly, and there's not a huge rush, is there is pressure here from a number of, of places. And one is this could take quite a while, even once there is the council. Well, Paul, I'm, I'm a goal-oriented person, so I need a date. If you're going to get to a target, if you don't have a date, I mean, it, it, can, it can go on forever. If, so what, what's your... When we first thought of it, and we're discussing it, but it may be totally unrealistic, we were hoping that it would take three months maximum for this committee to do its work and come back with recommendations. But I have no idea, I really don't know if that's... A realistic so that so that would be July 1st you'd want it. that's that's your we mental were, we picture were hoping before then but because that's we were when we thought of this we thought the first meeting would probably be in February so I mean well <coughs> is, is July 1st the date you're looking at or is it some other date or Jim might have an earlier date that he'd like this to have <laughs> Sure. Yeah, a um, couple of things about the schedule. Um, some of the mandates that the city has remain. So flood control related mandates have come down from the Army Corps of Engineers. Those are real and writing and right. paper. Some January 2014 dates. The city is supposed to have a number of things done that won't be done. So there's sort of that driver that exists. Um, the reference to the EPA permit and the MS4, there has been a delay in the release of the 
new draft mm -hmm. permit, and there's going to be draft permit, and then a comment period, and then a final permit. So that whole thing is longer, as you, as you have suggested, Paul. So there's that aspect of it, the driver is not really there. Um, in terms of uh, some other implementation type of things, I think within once, if the city decides that they want to do an enterprise fund, I think within maybe maybe two or three months, we could probably have a system up and running by modifying our existing billing structure to add new customers and figure out how to do that, maybe three months, not six. So some kind of time frame there. And then um, the last thing which um, I think is important, which uh, Ned had made me aware of, was that um, there's sort of a deadline that would exist in October of this year for the city to make a uh, have a conclusion about whether a new enterprise fund will be in place because that may impact setting the tax rate. Yeah. So the way I had envisioned this in my own mind was that if there's a deadline in October for the city to make a decision about a new enterprise fund, you almost need to work back, backwards from uh, an ordinance requirement to ordinance subcommittee to EDLU to the council to the board to a public process to this task force. And I think you see that you know, there's really not a lot of time for a lot of things to happen. So, you know, I don't really have an answer for it other than there's a very compressed schedule for a lot of things to happen, and whether it's achievable or not, I'm not really the one to say whether it is. I just think there are a number of steps of things that need to happen. So. Well, is the is the chair here, you know, if we're, if the expectation is that I get this committee fired up to get something done. They're going to want to know when they're supposed to get it done by, and I pretty much need to be able to tell them that. And, and, and if I don't have an answer, I can make up one. That's probably not the best way to proceed, although I have done things like that. Uh, in terms of being able to have forums reaching out to the public, having this go through city council, it might be totally unrealistic, but I would want something by May 1st out of this committee. May 1st. May 1st. <laughs> I, I know. It's, I'm, I'm not saying it, but that's, if we're looking at trying to get something Just by October, it. making sure we have outreach, having it, and maybe we can be doing things simultaneously, um, you know, having public forums even before it moves forward, say the city council and do those things, but... Just to add, I think some maybe potentially different perspective to that, I think we were bundling flood control and EPA stormwater stuff together. And I think the flood control issues may actually be more of a, uh, a sort of a bonded uh, capital expenditure. And if that's the case, that's a, that would be a separate discussion and activity from this committee, which would then potentially take all the pressure off the, because the EPA mandates really are at least you know, in terms of implementation, is what I'm hearing from discussions with the EPA, there's a three-year implementation schedule once it gets approved. So I, I, the pressure that, that I'm feeling with this that seems to be putting us under the gun is this flood control projects, and those really, those to me don't seem like a, a utility-type expense. Those are big ticket items that come up, they're defined, you get them done, and, and then you go to the next thing. That's different than the stormwater expense, which is a very predictable quarterly, monthly, annual thing that we can actually plan for as a utility would plan. This flood control thing is all over the place. I, I feel like if we pull that out, it changes our, our approach dramatically. David had want to make a comment. Uh, Emory, I agree with you personally that I like to get things done at a certain time and I like a deadline, and I think all of us agree to that. But we're charged with a very important process here, and when we talk about the city, I don't talk about the city government, I talk about the city population. And while it's important for us to look at all these details and get it done in the best time frame possible, I think it's more important that we get it done right. Because if we're going to take these recommendations and we're going to send them on to the subcommittee that's going to go to the DPW, the DPW, that's going to go to the city council for a vote, it's more important that we send them information that we're comfortable with, that we're going to be stuck with, because that's what they're going to vote on. And to rush this through and at the, at the, what is eventually what we're talking about, at the expense of the general population in the city. I am not willing to rush this through, regardless of if it's the end, 
the EPA, the DPA, whoever these people are, when we have to take this out in front of people in a public forum and say to them, we agree to what we're doing. And if we're doing it under a time frame, we are setting ourselves up for failure for ourselves and for the rest of the population of the city. Well, let me, let me at least be clear from my perspective. Picking a date doesn't necessarily mean to do it fast, but it does enable you to decide the time frame you're working in, and I think that's a really appropriate thing. Without some sort of a, a time frame, things can go on forever. And so my, uh, my pushing to get a date is not necessarily to get it done fast, but to understand what it, how big a process is this, and by picking a date, you can then begin to get your hands on that. And frankly, I don't have an answer to that, but I'm uncomfortable working on things that I don't have a, a, a target for, because my personal experience, my professional experience, has taught me no date, no target, uh, very difficult to control, outcomes are very difficult to predict, uh, not a good situation. It, it really isn't. And I, and I understand that our political leaders, uh, this is a difficult question to put to them. I have no illusions about how hard it might be to pick a date, but, but I think it's a, something we need to. We have a comment over here. I, I, I think there's two real good points. I think picking a date is important. In my profession, it's important to have a date, but I think you need to create some milestones along the way so you have some targets. I think you're absolutely right that we have to have, it has to be cohesive, it has to be clear. If we have one opportunity, we don't have twice. And most of the literature that has been available for review, whether it's come through Jim or it's come through other resources, have often said, make sure you do it correctly the first time. Because the second time is because you're responding to failure. I think there's two good points. I think if you set a date, it's fine, but you have to have some milestones along the way. Mm, well, I agree. Uh, yeah. I... Well, I'm really interested in what Dan just said Me too. about <clears throat> separating these these two um, sort of similar issues that we're that we're facing, and I'm I'm wondering if this committee, although we're not charged with how that money might be spent. Uh, just raising the money, I guess, is, is what we're here to do. It, Dan's point is, is really important because we have these mandates that are, that are right on us. Uh, and that <coughs> isn't the, the uh, choices that we make for different other projects in the town. So is, do we have the opportunity to separate these into a bond issue? Uh, and and perhaps a fee structure for, for others, or I I just don't know that. And and it's a very in, interesting option, given the, the the time frame that we're that we're working. Well, I, I want to put this question to Paul. If I understand his charge, is that he'd like this committee to recommend a formula or a possible fee structure for uh, funding. On a long-term basis, the uh, capital expenditures or the debt service, therefore, on that, or the operational expense for stormwater. I mean, I, I think that's what he was asking us to do. And I'm looking at Jim. I think that's. And, and I mean, now, whether we can split that apart is a question I have. Can, maybe it'll just help to tell you. There we were sitting, a bunch of counselors, getting the information. I don't know the answer. From, from Jim in the, in the joint committee. And what we, the, what we looked at was, oh my God, look at the amount of money that we were looking at. How are we going to afford these things? That was what we were looking at. And we realized that is a very big question. And we wanted, as we began to be kind of talk about it ourselves, we said, we want the public involved from the very beginning of the conversation. I'm not sure. I don't know the legal answer to what can be separated and what not. And Jim knows which, which of these pieces and which amounts of money go to different pieces. I, I think they could be separated out. The, the, let's let Jim respond and then we'll go to Alex, okay? Well, I wanted to clarify. Just the, the question really is to Jim. I mean, as a practical matter, debt service is like anything else. It's just part of the budget. It doesn't matter. 
we separate out the two? Does it matter if we separate flood control from stormwater? Uh, well, I, I, so a couple of comments. Um, you know, Dan, Dan's comments are very, very observant that, you know, flood control, the majority of costs for flood control are, are going to be capital type projects. You know, there's some maintenance for flood control, but it's a, it's a minor, a minor part. But the real problem that the city has is that the capital projects for flood control are expensive, and there isn't any money in the general fund to bond for these projects to do them. That's why um, flood control was married to the stormwater issues and stream erosion and all these sort of stormwater-related items into the budget that Terry had discussed last week. So could they be separated? Well, if the city had money in the capital plan and under the general fund to bond money to take care of flood control, then we probably wouldn't be having those married together. So I think it was looking at these common projects that the city uh, has obligations to take care of, but no way to fund them, and put them into something that could be covered by a stormwater and flood control utility. So it was sort of the genesis of the budget, how they came together, um, and definitely, you know, they could be separate. I mean, you could really, they could be separate in any, any number of ways, and when we talk about other utilities, you'll see that every town grapples with this very issue. How much, you know, what types of things do you cover in the enterprise fund? What types of things do you cover under the general fund? What kind of money do we have from different sources? And I think you, you have to come to the conclusion, um, at the end of the day, how do you how do you fund these projects that have to happen? Um, and I think Terry was describing what, at the last meeting that there just doesn't seem to be a lot of money in the general fund for any of the things that we're talking about, which is why we're here with this task force. Talking about ways to fund it. So I don't think they can be separated because what I've heard from the city is that there just isn't money to fund the large capital projects on the on the flood control side. But you know, that's, that's just I'm not the mayor. I'm just, I'm just so it would require an override right. to get that. And so I, so that's ultimately is what what I would suggest is that that may be the way because it then. I guess my cons my concern about approaching it this way is we're setting up a a fund before we actually have the dollars actually sort of planned out and understood, and that allows for quite a bit of budget creep to develop. And I, I just feel like it would be much better for the city to have some pretty clear project scopes and budgets. Um, put it before, you know, we need to do them, put before, uh, you know, for a vote and get people to approve it. And that eliminates sort of this gradual accumulation and paying cash, essentially, is I think what, you know, is we're going to have several million dollars a year going into this enterprise fund to keep funding these projects that need to get done. If I'm, if I'm misinterpreting that, then, okay. And I know that maybe there's some allowance in there for the more the larger projects for debt service and sure. So can I address that? Is that speak for a minute? Sure. So um, yeah, so the way the way the budget was presented was that um, there was a five hundred thousand dollar figure in there for construction projects annually, which is probably what you're talking about. The sort of if you don't spend five five hundred thousand in a year, it would roll over to the next year and then the next year you have a million different projects. But big projects like the levy projects, um, would, those would be bonded projects. Um, so you'd have a principal and interest debt service cost over a 20-year time frame to pay for a large capital project like flood control. So in the in the budget that Terry had shown last week, he showed principal and interest payments for the first two years of the proposed utility, what those would be. So the big one, the, those big projects wouldn't be cash, but they'd be bonded. But other projects like replacing a drain line in something like North Street, that would be paid with, with cash out of the uh, out of the fund. But um, you know, absolutely right. I mean, Terry had mentioned that what overrides was one of the slides. You know, that's that's one way to go. You know, it's it's not really up to me. We're just we're just trying to present the information and you know, kind of figure out what we think is best and what's the most realistic or most feasible. That may I mean it just may be the place for us to start the discussion given sort of the deadlines of where things need to go and how quickly it needs to move. Coming up with a formula of how to raise $2 million a year is definitely a different a different process than coming up with a formula within the next year 
for raising four or five hundred thousand dollars a year if it, if it actually is that for the EPA mandates. So those those are two very really different discussions that I feel like we, we just don't have enough time to adequately do what we were originally charged with doing. Given those dates. Given these yeah, given May or June, I don't I don't see there's, there's a lot. I think it'll have so much pushback, and and the educational component that we're going to need to do, and everything else to be compressed. We'll be meeting, you know, at least once a week, if not twice a week, for three or four hours. I guess, Jim, what's most important is what's the first thing that we have to do. And I, I know that the mandates on the on the levies have been out for a while. <clears throat> have we done anything on, on these mandates yet? Uh, we've done very little. Um, the city has provided $250,000 to start some work on the Mill River levy system improvements. So that's something that we're designing right now and trying to get out to bid here within the next month. So it's a fraction of the, the levy um, work that needs to be done. Yeah. But it was some money that the city found available that was had been earmarked for something else. And we're using it for some, some of the Mill River work. What percentage of the mandate is, is that? Uh, I think it was the numbers are a couple million. So 250,000 or a couple million. The 10 percentage. 10 percent. Bob? Bob? Yeah, I wanted to just turn this back because I really think this is a complex problem to resolve. And as much as May 1st would be a great goal, we can't do May 1st. It just isn't going to happen. So I think we have to decide what, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we're going to do what we're going to do, but then we should decide. Are we going to try to do it by June 1st or July 1st? I don't care, but May 1st, it's just not going to happen. We don't have enough time. And we have to get it right out of the gate, because if, if it goes down, it's never coming back. It, it is, uh, but I, you know, it's not clear to me it's still what we're really doing. I mean, if what we're doing is looking is to build an equitable system to build a utility, to, to target people for a utility, to create a utility, then it really, those other questions aren't relevant to us. It's a very narrow, if that's, if in fact that's what they're asking us to do, is to um, sign off on what we feel is an equitable way to raise money. Not saying that we need the money or how much money yeah. or anything else. And I think that if we define it that narrowly, and if that's really the question that, that the city council wants from this committee, then, you know, May, I don't agree. I think May even for that yeah. is narrow. But uh, from, from the limited reading I've done, Having a really sound business plan is the only way you're going to be able to sell this to the city. That unless you have real projects, real costs, uh, and it's very clear cut, and I, I haven't explained it to, to uh, this committee, to my, I, you know, I still don't have really no idea uh, how you're breaking money down, uh, debt service, uh, the, under, you want the minimum amount the EPA is going to accept before they say, uh, you know, we can't use our outfalls. I, I, that seems like something that, anyway, that's not a here nor there. But an equitable system, that seems like something we can do. We don't recommend it to the city, but if you're going to raise money, this is equitable. Well, I would have to disagree to part of that, because how do you set up a fee schedule that's equitable if you don't know what you're basing the fee schedule on? We don't know what this fee schedule is, and how it affects different parts of the population, the taxpayers. So you're going to say, here's a fee schedule based on these numbers, but you don't understand the numbers. If, if that comes out in public discussion, the game's over because we're going to, we're going to look, we're not going to look capable. And so we're we're coming up with a fee schedule to get the fee schedule in without recognizing, you know, we, we uh, Terry said last week we, we have no charge to talk about the budget. So we can't talk about the budget, so we don't know how it was arrived at. Then we don't know, you know, in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 
what happens? And then what, how do we tell the taxpayer that $65 is your, your bill in 2013, but in 2018 it's $650? Because that, that's where it's going to fail. Can I answer just that? Because I think you're mixing up at least what I said. I don't see it as a fee schedule. I don't think we're raising a fee schedule. I don't think we're, we're, we're asked to come up with a, with a dollar figure. We're just to, asked to, just the formula. to design an equitable system. The formula is going to amount to a dollar figure. It is. Yeah, yeah. It there's is. other communities that part of their formula is a cap, both yeah. residential and commercial. Yeah. We, we can't even think about a cap if we don't know what the number is. So it, it eliminates this whole part of our discussion. Uh, I think there's, in my mind, there's two issues here. I think you can design a fee schedule. Whether it's equitable or not, I, that's open to debate. But the second question is, if in our smoke-filled room we manage to develop this schedule or logic for it, we have no idea what will happen when we go downtown, if you will, and talk to the general public, because they may have a completely different reaction the minute they try to apply it to their particular situation. So we really have to balance two of those pieces. It has to be acceptable to the community, as well as to be internally logical, because there's probably two or three schedules you could imagine. But selling it to the community is quite another issue, right? Uh, to me, that's a, you go out and somebody applies it to their residence, and, and they say, oh dear, <laughs> and that's exactly what will happen. People will do that, you know, we can't, they're smart, they know what they're doing. And, and so I think there's two pieces to this, uh, and, and they go together. I don't think we could pull them apart. Jim? These are great comments. I want to I want to say something about the budget. Um, we didn't spend a lot of time on the budget um, last week. Terry kind of went through it quickly. It was one of about 50 slides he covered. <coughs> we're happy to talk about the budget. The numbers are real. We've been working on the budget for over a year. There's a lot of breakdown to it. We could provide all the backup and breakdown and, and, and have a detailed discussion about where the numbers came from. It's meant to be transparent. We're happy to talk about it. Um, we really are. Um, there was some discussion at the last meeting about, well, maybe we'll, we won't get into the details as the task force about every line item in the budget, but from, you know, from our perspective, we're happy to do that. There's a basis for everything in there, and there were decisions that were made that went into making the budget, but, you know, nothing is cast in stone, and, you know, people have good comments, obviously, you know, folks have got a lot of questions and good ideas of what's happening here. Happy to talk about the budget, and then what I had envisioned, um, so there's this comment about um, developing a fee structure without knowing the budget, and there's there's two things really. There's sort of a whether a, whether a rate is fair, is it equitable, and that's sort of based on kind of percentages, based on the calculations you do. Who pays what? If you've got a large parking lot, what would your bill be? If you're a single family homeowner, what would your bill be? But you only really know the magnitude of that bill if you know what the budget is. So getting what I had envisioned was that. There'd be some basic agreement in terms of what that what this enterprise fund would be in terms of a revenue requirement, and then we were prepared to calculate using different assumptions for different rate structures, a number of different bills, so that we could present to the task force. Well, we've got four or five different structures based on input that we get from you, that we can develop bills and then bring them in. So, you know, if you're the owner of, uh, you know. Cumberland Farms, we can tell you your bill would be this. If you're Smith College, we could say your bill is this. I, I could do a bill for my house and bring it in for all the different rate structures that you wanted to look at, and then you would be able to have a sense, you know, how can you vote on something if it's equitable or not if you don't really know what the bill is? And I can appreciate that. So it's really, the equitable is how is the, how is the revenue need distributed amongst the community, and then the basic fairness is how much is the damn bill? Right? I mean, these are the things that you want to know. So what, if, I was a, if I was a voting member, that's what I would want to know. So, and staff was thinking that this is the type of information that we would provide to the task force in order for you to make a decision. But um, we're prepared to give you any backup on the, rev the revenue, the budgets, and anything really to help you better understand it. Uh, I think that's great, Jim, because really, if we're going to recommend something, we do want to know how it's going to affect actual taxpayers in the town. And we, if we can compare systems doing that, that'd be even better, because that's going to be the real test. of We may mean different things by fair, and this way we'll get to see what it does to actual boots on people on the ground. 
Last week, uh, Terry presented a, a budget or went through a budget, and he only gave us a two-year picture. I think it was 14 and 15. But if I understand this correctly, we believe those needs are going to be there in 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, and 21, and so it goes. And they're going to go up. Uh, moreover, during that time period, there may be even larger requirements. So we don't know uh, beyond 10 years, we'll say, uh, what, that, what that's going to look like. But if we take the numbers that Terry talked about, and if I remember, they were something like a couple of million bucks a year for both flood and stormwater, and you just said, okay, that's what you're going to spend for the next 10 years, every year, two million bucks. That's $20 million that you have to raise somehow rather than find funding. An analogy might be, we all have uh, license plates on our cars. We all pay a fee for those license plates. Whether we're, non, we're a nonprofit organization or a profit or wherever, everybody has to buy a license plate. You could imagine the fee for flood water and storm water as being a water fee, just like a license fee. I mean, th so that's a, a concept one could imagine. There are other fees we pay. I mean, Paying golf licenses. That is, that is the, that's the plan, and that's, that is where we're starting. And, and so I think that's the, the kind of the assumption that was made that now they somebody said to us, well, okay, what kind of a formula can you devise that will allow us to get some funding every year for 10 years to apply towards this 10-year uh, expense that you're going to face. Part of it's going to be capital, and part of it's going to be uh, just expense, if cash. It's not so clear to me whether it's all cash in one year or all capital in one year, but but just as a mental picture, it's it's the order of 10, 20 billion dollars over 10 year period of time. There are 10,000 or thereabouts tax paying entities in this city. So you can quickly divide through 10,000 into this number and get a, a rapid number of what that number might look like. That's assuming everybody paid the same, and I'm not suggesting that. that that's a bad idea, but it, but it allows you to think about the problem. And I think what we're being asked is, can we devise, or if we did devise, do you, could we sell it to the community, the system? Or the... the, the uh, so I think uh, there's two parts in my mind. One based week, on what we know today, though. Yes. Pick pick a number. I, I certainly cannot even can't even start to do yeah. that. Excuse me, Alex. You, you can go first. But I wanted to answer this question. But I'm sure he's still. Well, I'm answering the kind of the same question uh, that that was from the original complaint on the on the, on the minutes. Uh, the, the DPW has their estimate is about two million dollars a year. Are we going to as a body? pick through their numbers and try and figure out are we going to, or are we going to accept that, or are we going to do some other third thing? I guess that's it. Well, the CDM report, if I read it right, uh, is more on the scale of $100 million over 20 years, um, somewhere around that. Minimum. So, <clears throat> you know, I really like what Jim was saying that, you know, if I understood what you were saying right, um, that we could decide as a committee that two million is the right number, or three million, or four, or five, and you could give us what each unit would be paying. Well, that would be very helpful, I think, if, if we saw that. You know, I'm afraid that we're going to start, we're going to sell this as a two million dollar a year enterprise fund, and it's going to jump up to 15 million one year. And it's just going to be a, a shock. So I, I'm I'm much more inclined to say it's going to be five million a year, and and really you know or, or pick a larger number. So to me, it would be helpful if we if we I guess did it in a reverse way like that. Like what do we need each year? What are the units that what I've been reading about you know other uh, enterprise funds and how they assign uh, I forget the uh, a, a unit 
per house, like a single family house is the base unit, and then a, you know, a big property would pay six of those units if it was a commercial. So can we figure out how many units there are in town and then, you know, you know is that is that what you're talking about? We do, we know. We, we have a lot of, when we get, we've got a little bit We know of, that. <laughs> we've got a little bit of I have that number. Yeah. We have uh, 10,390 tax-paying entities. But they're not That's the same size. That's not the same size. No, no, no. I'm talk but, but you have to consider well, all what the categories mean. add up to this. And, and so they pay this. And now we can segregate them according to houses or, or con bills, industrial. The, our assessors, have, they break that all out for you. So we can say how many houses there are, how many farms there are, how many condos there are. How many polygons there are? Uh, yeah, a fair amount of this. I mean, it's I know. so we, we can <coughs> we can do that. The question is, do you, do you budget for ten million or twenty or fifty? And I don't know. It's our committee. Whether we, it's up to us to make a decision on that number or not. I don't think it is. I. Oh, we need to understand it. Yeah. Well, and I right agree. Right now, I, I don't agree. understand yeah. it. So. Is it two million? I'm favoring no. It's not. Well, and if it's not, then what actually is it? So, is there a mechanism to understand the next ten years? Right. Fully understand it, yeah. Because we have to sell this program. And certainly, just in this conversation, where Rick went from two to five million, that is not going to be part of any discussion I'm going to be because that that is just frankly out of I can't understand that. And, and on top of this, in terms of the fee structure, what we're not talking about is the overhead to administer this program down the road. Exactly. All right? And we have no control because that's not part of the budget. So in terms of overhead, looking at this as another enterprise, which is a business, is that someone has to administer this. And now we're going to have another Board of Assessors office to administer the complaints as they come in because they don't like the the way it was done, so now we're going to have overhead that's not part of this, so who's controlling the overhead costs? And as these things come and go in a project like this, because it is a, if it's a $20 million project or a $2 million project, this is a huge enterprise, and you need a system to control that. So who is going to do that, and where is that allocated for in the budget that we saw from Terry last week, which he said, frankly, we have no control over. I can't go to the public and say, this is what works, because it's two to five or 20 and blah, blah, blah. And if it has to be raised, who gets the vote that approves the raise? Does it come back to the city council or is it forever gone down so someone can raise the price without ever having to be a with, a beholden to someone else, to the voters, to us? So, so it's a very, I'm, I, I, this is a very passionate issue for a lot of people and yes, they don't yes. even know it yet. We're starting, we're starting to hear it, and this is, this is a taxpayer in this city. Call the one. There's a huge amount of money that's being asked, and we don't even know what it is. Well, uh, in the time frame of May 1st, which frankly, that it was even proposed is ludicrous. That's six weeks. Let me just try to answer one part of that question, if I understand it correctly. Part of these issues uh, are mandates. The only question, at least as I understand it, is when EPA is going to enforce this, not if. That whether it's going to be this year, next year, or some other year. The Corps of Engineers has already said, you have to do this. I don't know whether the EPA can... But they haven't said that, that we have to implement a, a fee or a utility No, 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 no but, but the, the cost to the city could exist, whether we do a fee or not. And so whether we do a fee or this not. More, this goes way beyond the mandates from uh, the Army Corps. This is, this is, if I understood correctly in the presentation last week, it included and was thinking about replacing and having a fund to replace. And I'm not disagreeing that we may need to do this, but a fund to replace all of our storm sewers over the next 100, 150 or in perpetuity, really. And is that going to be handled by a fee, or is that going to be handled, you know, through some uh, some override and part of our property tax? But but if I, I completely agree with this. If we start with this fee, that just I mean, it, it could very well get out of control. And I think the place to start might be actually to start with this budget and just go through what is this budget made of, 
what do we want to include as part of a fee discussion? Now, what makes sense to categorize this? This is a recurring, routine fee. Let's let's make this part of the, the stormwater fee, and then the rest of it maybe just doesn't get included in our discussion. Ruth. Um, I brought this up last week. I'd like to bring it up again. Chicopee, there was a conference in 2012, which at the time Mary Claire didn't go to. Uh, Chicopee got a break on this. The EPA got all the different re reporting and cleanups and things. They only have to pay 2% until 2026. Now, this is something we can look into. There are a lot of different towns. I had papers spread out here. East Hampton got a grant. I brought that up. Um, I know grants are not definitive I was told that you know you can't always depend on grants I've been told that once a grant is awarded you can depend on that grant um, I've got the information about what Chicopee got we can look into that there are things we can do besides just saying slam here's your fee we can check into some of these things and find out if we can reduce what we have to to nail all the, the people in Northampton with before we you know just go out and say here's five million dollars you've got to pay every year um, you know, we can, can check into some of these things. There's, there's nothing that says we have to start right off with just a huge dollar value. Chris? Um, I, I think one of the things that I took away from Terry's presentation was that when we, when we were looking at budgeting, um, we felt that it was, there was a very strong likelihood that a fee was going to be a component of any financing package we put together. But I don't think at any point he was advocating, nor did he believe it would be practical, that fees would be the only mechanism for it. And, and I'm intrigued by Dan's sort of divide on, you know, the stormwater versus the, the flood control. Because prior to prior tonight, to I had thought intuitively you, you always were going to want to deal with them together. Um, but I, and I, I'm not sure I've walked away from that entirely, but that may be as we think about how to structure a financial package, that that's the divide between where fees go and where overrides go and, 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 and some sort of hybrid thing. Um, because I don't, I agree with you. I think if, if we're going to do this t entirely in a fee structure and we're talking about a $5 million annual, which is what it's going to be if you tie all these things into one package, that's not that's not going to fly. But if you if you look at the concept of some form of routine maintenance and upgrades that are going to be done on an annual basis with with a, a guaranteed revenue stream enhanced by or supplemented by project based financial individual project based financials that may draw on some of the cash if it's available. Um, but also sort of um, capital improvement type initiative where you do bonding or however you do it, some other thing, that, that that's really what we're looking at. And so we don't want to, I, don't, I just don't want to see us get bogged down entirely on this, you know, we, we don't want to throw this huge rate increase at people because I, I don't think ultimately that's going to be the, the system we come up with. So. Well, remember what Paul's, as I understood his mechanism is, we're going to come up with a recommendation of some kind or another, presumably. And we give it to the, the Joint uh, Council DPW Committee, which I, I gather Paul is on, Terry Calhoun is on, and I don't recall the other members. They're going to mull it over, talk to the DPW staff, and then that amalgamation of conversations will go to our counselors. And then they're going to make a recommendation. Our job is to recommend to that committee. Uh, I'm sure we would get involved at some point with going out to the general community to, to discuss this. But I don't think we're charged with uh, doing the budgeting. I mean, and that's kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that's it's the mechanism. within our charge. And if, we, if, if, if that's what you want to do, we need to go back to Paul or somebody and say, we want to play budget and decide what's in and what's out, and then we'll do the fee structure after we've done the budget. And, and we'd have to either get permission to do that or not. Jim? Just another comment about the budget. Um, I don't think any type of new enterprise fund would, would ever get the approval of the community if you didn't really know what the value was. 
So I think all these comments are very, very good um, because you need to know how much money are we talking about. And, you know, I mentioned we can go into the detail and all the backup to the $2 million budget. Um, and I appreciate John's comment about, well, what do you, you know, what's your 10 year plan? Um, and I think, it, as everybody knows, the further you go out in time, the less certain and the less you know about what you need to do. Um, and I think at this point, um, there are just a couple of things that we know that might come up within the next 10 years, and actually both of the projects are related to flood control and are dependent on some engineering studies that will tell us what needs to be done, possibly to replace the Hockenham Road, flood control pump station or upgrade it, and then additional work on the levees that uh, may be necessary because of uh, engineering analysis and the Corps tells us to do other things. So there's a couple things within the 10 year time frame we know will hit. The CDM report, um, you know, there, there really are no projects in the CDM report that uh, the city is looking at doing or, or making a priority in any way. I think the $500,000 for annual drainage infrastructure that Terry talked about at the last meeting would be the money that would be available for capital projects like a North Street or some other culvert replacement projects or drain replacements and, and streets that need it. So, but I think the, the, the main point that I want to make is that everybody needs to be comfortable with a budget. No one wants to be talking about an enterprise fund that's based on some nebulous figure. I certainly don't want to be have any part of anything if people aren't familiar, you know, if they're not comfortable with the numbers or if people want to have a good sense of what the city's obligations are. I don't think it's a place anybody really wants to be. So if we need to spend a whole meeting or whatever providing um, more backup to, to Terry's table, we're happy to do that. Um, the, the cost of the overhead of running a system is a very good point. We didn't, obviously didn't talk about that at all. But um, there, is a, there is a component in the budget related to sort of the overhead administration of an enterprise fund that's in there. And we can talk about that number. And there's a, there's a backup spreadsheet to that number that uh, it was like a $220,000 number, I think, in the spreadsheet um, that identified what the overhead would be. So you can look at the detail of what is $200,000, what does that cover? Happy to talk about all those issues. And I was going to talk about other utilities tonight. And uh, I think what this whole discussion is interesting because this is the type of discussion I think that every town that has a utility goes through. And what happens is um, everyone ends up with their own sort of solution. And, you know, Dan has raised some really good points about the use of an override. And there, there are other communities that have decided, like the town of Reading, for example, they decided that um, they set up an enterprise fund, but they only wanted to cover their increased cost because of the EPA stormwater permit. So they went through this whole thing. They were going to set up an enterprise fund for all these different stormwater things. And then they, they had a big committee. And by the time they get to the end, they decided that it was just going to be the incremental cost to comply with the permit that would be in the utility. And then the rest of it would, would be in the general fund. And, and every town comes up with some other way of, of dealing with it. They're comfortable with it. They think will work. Um, we're starting our discussion here with a basic assumption that there's not a lot of money um, in the general fund. Overrides are possible. I don't know how feasible. I don't know if people would vote for it. Would people here vote for an override? For well, I, mean, I don't really know. So there's a little bit of a question there about would you, would you even get the money to take care of the city's obligations if you went that way? I, I, I don't know that. I don't know the answer, but certainly it's a tool. You know, it's one of them. Um, but I guess the important thing is, you know, the budget, I think everybody wants to be comfortable knowing what, what the number is, and that if you meet someone on the street, you can say, well, you know, we're talking about 2 million or 1.5 or whatever the number ends up being, that you understand what the basis is, you're comfortable with it, they're real numbers, and, this, and, this, and, and, you, and you understand it, and everybody can understand it. Do you, is the sense of this group that you want to have a, a meeting long discussion of the detailed budget next time? No, it would be my preference that anybody on the task force who wants to get together with Jim and get a deeper understanding of the numbers he's got should do that to well, their I, satisfaction. Well, I hear you, Bob, right now, but we okay. need, we got a whole bunch of other uh, members here that might might feel differently. And Jim might just as be just as happy to do it once instead of having each one of us go to his office to talk to him about it because that's very consuming of his time. So. What do other people think here? Do you want to have a, a, a meeting long, half meeting long, detailed budget presentation? No, I don't. 
I'd like to see the information. I don't think we have to have a long discussion about it. I think it'd be nice to at least see the information we, we, beforehand. Is, we saw it last time, right? Well, there's much more information than that. Yeah. Well, yeah, how much, I guess that's that's what I'm asking. How much do you want? I mean, Jim could come in here probably with a great long spreadsheet with... Well, there's there's always discussion of, you know, impervious square footage. I mean, I don't know, and I'm not from... The well, company. but that's not in the budget of the... <clears throat> no, it's, it, but the, it's not, but it's information that would be helpful. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the budget part, where so, we get the number. So the budget that was provided last week... Where they were, t we were talking about uh, what it would cost to do the, the stormwater stuff. I'm not on the task force. Which went out I'm hearing years. a lot of questions about the budget. It went out to three years, correct? 16? Yes. Right. 16. Yeah. 16, yeah. Okay. yeah. I can't make a decision going forward for the town of Northampton based on three years of information. I'd like to see that. At least know what's out there. For okay, the yeah, no, okay. So, Alex, how do you, where do you come out on this one? I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Norma? I'm still thinking about it, too. I agree with John. <laughs> Ten years would be nice. Yeah. Ten years, okay. Rick? Yeah, that, that makes sense, and I think Jim's ready to, to give us that Chris? information. Chris? How far up do you have already, Jim? We have what you have seen, and there are, like I said, there are about two other projects. We don't know the magnitude of them. We can make some assumptions um, and put them in there. Bob? I don't see any reason to devote a meeting to this, but because it's outside our charge. But if people want to do that, that's fine. Ruth? Is, Jim, is it a lot of, is it feasible for you to give us 10 years? Well, there are some numbers we don't, we don't know exactly what the number's going to be. So like I said, the further out in time we go, um, the less certain the number is. But I think in terms of, you know, order of magnitude, yeah, I mean, I can, I can tell you what the projects are, and we can put a number in there, and then you can see, you know, what would the effect on the rate be? Well, at least it would give us it would yeah. give us something so to, to go on. Yeah, and I'd like to see that too. Escalation. Mm -hmm. you know, How about you? You know what that is. Yeah, <clears throat> then I'd like to see that too. Have you seen enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to see that too. Okay. I think. Uh, Henry, if, if we, Ned, we got Ned in the back. Ned, yeah, just a quick comment about that. The fact that these uh, these MS4 permits are five-year permits. We dealt with the last five years on a very uh, shoestring budget. We got to it. We met the core requirements. This is the second permit coming on us with a lot more obligations. And because of that, the O&M personal services have basically at least doubled, if not tripled, almost in size. We don't know what the, the 2018 permit's going to ask us to do. And that's why Jim was talking about, well, that doesn't get further out. <clears throat> we don't know what those obligations are going to be and what they're going to ask us to do. Are they going to ask us to actually end up treating stormwater in 10 years from now? And I, I would... Based on what I understand from you know, being sort of in the business of you know, what the EPA is, is doing right now, I see it going the other way. Probably over the next five to ten years, I don't see it getting more, you know, more stringent necessarily. And, and what it sounds like is this next draft is going to be substantially less onerous in terms of requirements than the draft that we've already looked at. And that they're really looking to... They've gotten so much pushback from other communities uh, that have not gone ahead and, and implemented uh, the MS4. So I think that there's going to be potentially, you know, more relief for us as a community. All right. Thank sure. you, Ned, for that because that brings up a very good point that the public needs to know that if you're right, mm -hmm. that in five years this could be double or triple. And Dan, the public That's needs right. to know that perhaps the, the requirements will be less. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to coming up with this fee schedule, that if we come up with $65 or $6,500 or $650, and it's going to be double or triple because we don't know, the public needs to know that because these are things, five years comes here very quickly. And you're, you're, you're voting on this, and these things you do know about, the public doesn't. And that's going to have some part of what you speak to the public about. The other comment, excuse me, Jim, that I'd like to make is that there are 351 towns in the Commonwealth, 351 towns. Four or five towns now have the, this ordinance in place. Of the 351 towns, how many towns need to have the ordinance? 200? Not all towns need to have it. 
but that's correct. Okay, but there, there's, there's, there's 200 pounds need to have them? I don't know. Those X number of pounds. Let's say 150 pounds. Five. <coughs> I appreciate the work. I'm for this. I appreciate the work that the DPW and the BPW does. But I don't know why the city of Northampton has to be the poster child for the EPA. I don't, I don't understand why we can't wait and be middle of the pack so we can get a temperature of what's going on here rather than leading this with this, let's get this done. And we, we made our requirements and we're the sixth or the seventh town and there's 143 towns behind us watching us. I don't want to be the 104, I don't want to be the 150th town, but I don't want to be the sixth or seventh town learning this. So we could learn from the other people. So the speed thing again comes to we've got to do it right. And being the first party to the dance does not get the job done right. Um, I just wanted to speak to the uncertainty of the budget as we move ahead. There's um, some good points are being made here. Uh, just in terms of order of magnitude and, and what the fee, what the impact of fees would be. So some of the things that are permit related are operational costs. So some of the things Dan's suggesting, you know, there may be a reduction in some activity. Um, in terms of the budget, it's really some of these big capital projects that will have a have a, more of an impact on what the fee yeah. is. So operationally, you know, from a percentage standpoint, the operational cost is sort of a smaller percentage of the budget. Um, so you can you can look at ranges, but I think when you look at the Hockenham Road pump station and any other additional levy work that'll be done, I think you're going to see that if you make some conservative assumptions about those capital costs are going to be, those are the projects that are really going to have an impact on the fee five years from now. Um, so some of the unknown permit stuff is important, but I think in terms of the impact on the fee, it's, you know, if you're going to build a, a, a multi-million dollar pump station or something, then clearly that's going to be something that will impact what people are paying. Well, I think part of the answer is that, that Northampton in some ways is a relatively unique town because we're sitting on a river here, the Connecticut River. So we have a significant potential for flooding, uh, both from the river and from drainage. And we also have a stormwater problem at the same time. Many other towns in the, in the Commonwealth are not situated in the same sort of geography we have, so they have a very different situation. So I don't think it's appropriate that we compare ourselves to all the different towns, only those that, that might be appropriate. I don't know what those towns are, but I'm, but I'm sure there are a lot of towns that have are, are quite different from us in, in those terms. They don't have levees, uh, so they don't have that issue. They haven't had a history of flooding like we have. And that will always be because of where we are. And so I don't know what the Army Corps of Engineers has said to those towns, if anything. And, and I'm not sure what EPA, I'm, I'm not in the EPA business or the, in the flood control business either one, or never have been, I actually don't want to be. Uh, so, I, so I think we should just think about all the towns. I, I think there are just some, a few that we there need There are more to than a few. I'm not disputing what you're saying, but we can go Greenfield, Holyoke, Ludlow, Chickabee, right along the river. No, there no, are I, other I, rivers in the state of Massachusetts, yeah. so... I'm not disputing, but we have 351 towns, 150 have no issue. Of the 150 left, 75 might have issues. I don't know. We don't need to be number six. We need to be in the middle so we can learn from them rather than lead the charge and make mistakes at the expense of speed. I'm not disputing what you're saying. Does our, our blogger man want to speak here? Yes, the man does. I want to talk about a tree, okay? I want to talk about a tree that's growing in the dike about 100 yards from the main pumping station. And it's a big tree. It's been, it's been probably about 40 years old. And in um, a, a healthy storm, that could tear, do a lot to damage the functioning of that particular dike. So in a sense, this, this is a real issue involving real hazards, real flooding, et cetera. That's all I want to say. The problem with the budget that I saw was that it's completely uh, opaque. There's no narrative with the budget that says this thousand dollars is for this. This, it, it seemed to me not understandable. And I'll finally say that uh, we did one article, I did one article on 
for on the Meadows CDM report. And I'm going to do another one on the Broughton Brook part of it. And, and the CDM figures, I think, are wildly at variance to what is really needed, which is much less money. You know, that, but I, I'll talk more about that if I have some time next, next, next week or next week, okay? During public time. Thank you. Marianne, did you want to say something we haven't heard from you? Uh, no, I had my hand up before on public comment. Apparently, I'm a little bit too small for you. But anyways, <laughs> I just want to say I'm going to echo everything that David Teese is saying. Being a city councilor, I am hearing it every day. Every day from people, taxpayers throughout the city and even on my ward, concerns of more money coming out of their pockets. I would rather see you go slow with this than fast, because if you're going to do it, do it right. I have a lot of concerns about this fee being added on to the taxpayers here in the city of Northampton. And the article that Ruth has is very, very important about Chicopee, about how they got that waiver. And I agree with David here about we need to look at other towns and cities on how they are doing this fee also. I know I did ask, I attended every meeting they had at the Board of Public Works, even at 8.30 in the morning, two consecutive days. In regards to the presentation that Terry had given, okay, we talk about $64 or whatever on each home. And I asked the question, well, would this stay that way? Or will it rise in two years or so? And he came out and said, I cannot give you that answer. I hear it tonight from David also. What will happen in five years or 10 years down the line? Also, the public comment part, because I need to leave. I would like to see each time you're having a discussion that you open it up to the public. The public is very, very important. And I know as a city councilor, we will have public discussion on this whole issue, on the storm water utility fee that's being placed in the city. I have a very, very conservative ward, and it's very hard to even get a prop two and a half passed on it or an override. And I was very fortunate, I worked with the mayor, our former mayor, and the police department to get that override to pass for this police station, and we won it by 55 votes, two weeks. We're out doing coffee hours on my ward. You're going to have to really explain to the taxpayers what you're doing and how you're doing it. Well, Councillor, this budget is, is, is not a budget that this committee put together. I this, understand that. This, this budget was presented to us, and, uh, and so... All in a I presentation, can, so yeah, it wasn't narrative. Yeah, yeah. At the time. so all I can say is this came to us from Terry Culhane, and I'm not in a position to either justify it or, or, or say it's incorrect. So um, I, I could appreciate people's concern about it, but this committee, uh, it, it isn't our budget. It's one that we were given to work with, and uh, and and if you have information to suggest that it's not correct or you can help us correct it, we'd be happy to get that information. I just have to call Terry. I can get all the information I need. One thing I wanted to talk about, um, when we get, I don't know when these things are going to, going to come up, we've got to get over this one here. But um, one of the issues that we're here to talk about it, uh, is equity in terms of some of the financial obligations and, and what we pay. And we were talking about an override. You know, an override is something that goes on the tax base. And when you look at the breakdown in equity of fees, if you look at using real estate taxes to pay for things like flood control and stormwater versus having um, a fee system, under a fee system, you'll find that um, uh, properties with large impervious areas will pay more um, in terms of contribution toward these types of uh, needs than they would now. If you have a fee, if you have a fee system, there's been some discussion that everybody gets a bill. So if you're Smith College, if you're Cooley Dickinson Hospital, if you're another nonprofit, 
you have a large parking area, big buildings, you generate a lot of stormwater, you're going to get a big bill, right? So that money would go toward improvements for flood control and stormwater. They don't pay anything into real estate tax. So in terms of equity and distribution of revenue to meet the city's obligations, by having a fee, it actually shifts some of the burden from the homeowner to businesses and nonprofits and people that don't contribute very much for these types of facilities. So there's a lot of different aspects of, of the equity, but um, it's just something to be aware of when you talk about a fee versus using a tax to pay for some of these things. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Brent? Can I do my public comment? Sir? Sure, you can do your public comment. It's a, it's a little bit ahead. You, you're probably not ready to hear it yet, but. Uh, I figure since I did it, I, I might as well uh, get it out and uh, I'll feel better. My name is Fred Zimnock. I live in Ward 3 with one of the city's levees, not a dike, the stormwater pump station, wastewater treatment facility. My interest in this meeting began when the United States Army Corps of Engineers mandate in the summer of 2011 uh, to repair the levee at the pump station. I found out that lack of compliance uh, with this mandate would prompt the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to rate the project as unacceptable with a possible FEMA downgrade and also loss of United States Army Corps of Engineers PL84-99 assistance in case of flood damage. So I guess if you have a, you know, a dam or a levee rather that's damaged during a flood, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers will help you repair it if it's in acceptable condition. If it's not, then <coughs> tough nookies. So I'm here for two reasons. The first reason is because I read the first volume of the CDM report, which I assume is an example of events to follow. Among the many discoveries I made was Table 5.11 on page 519, with the rate for a single family residence. The first payment is $59.79. After five years, the rate jumps to $151.58. And if you look at the numbers, they look a little bit suspicious. And the reason why is because they're compounding at a rate of over 15%. And in fact, if you do something and make a graphic representation, you see that the rate they got in there really goes up. I mean, we're not talking two and a half. We're talking like 15, 18, 19 percent. If you then, um, oh, the, uh, then if you take that rate that they have for five years and look to see what it is at 10 years, it jumps up to $603.43. So that really got me excited. The commercial rate is still more impressive. I see your efforts in the shadow of one or more city budget overrides. Since establishing this rate as part of your charter, I hope you can find a more acceptable algorithm for rate increase. Further examining the report, I found that my property would have an estimated stormwater profile of about 10,000 feet squared. I ran outside, measured the house, the garage, the driveway, the sidewalks. <laughs> I did. I know you did. I'm impressed. Porches, blah, blah, blah and I couldn't find more than about 5,000 square feet. And I think I included the public sidewalk, which I don't sh think should be included, unlike Bob Rick. <laughs> I went further into the report, and I found some more frightening numbers where the CDM reports the appropriate good chunk of money for m and with equally excessive annual increases, at least in my mind. And we talked about m and just a few minutes ago. During last week's meeting, there was a discussion about sewer and water enterprise fund. During the fervent discussion, the annual cost was reported at six. Six what? Um, six thousand? Six no. million dollars. Six billion? Is it six oh, the, million? The water enterprise fund is high sixes? Is that what is it? Six million? Is Seven. that, Seven. that what you're supposed to be? Six billion? Oh, you Seven. said it was six. Seven. Water and sewer. Water and sewer enterprise. Yeah. Annual. How much? Six combined? Yeah. Water and sewer are roughly 11, 11. plus. Yeah. I heard six, the number six. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The second reason is to try to understand government. 
The Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund was established in 1988. The stormwater system was established, I believe, in the 70s as part of Clean Water Act. The rhetorical question is, why wasn't this enterprise fund established earlier? <laughs> but more importantly is, who, how, will the annual levy, levy for this enterprise fund be established, and who controls it? So that's it. Can we get a copy of your comments to Absolutely. put in the record? You can email them to Jim Lorilla, perhaps. Well, yeah, just transmit them to us. You can either give them to us or send us email, however you'd like to do that. I can scan it and email it to everybody. Yeah. And I think everybody here should read the CM, CDM report, volume one. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, everybody will get a copy in due course. I'm not exactly sure how, but. but I'll we'll, scan it and email it to everybody. Yeah, we'll, we'll get your copy. Rick? I would just like to uh, comment on what David said and, and sort of on what. Fred was saying that um, my experience has been a lot of uh, big actions in, in Northampton takes place under a sense of urgency that may or may not be there. And uh, I think that in this case that we really knew, need to get this right. And, uh, uh, you know, my, I'm very concerned about the mandates and making sure that we don't lose our status around the levy systems and to me that seems to be step one first thing we have to do it the other enterprise that we you know we're, we're in for some catastrophes on, on this system at some point this is a very old drainage system so there's no doubt that we need to do work on this system but what what is really compelling me to be here is um, Making sure that we that we maintain our status uh, in the flood district uh, with, with the Army Corps and figuring out a way to pay for that. I would like to see some some focus directly on that and not be under such an urgent um, mandate to, to to do things that aren't that urgent. It, they're important but not urgent. If you go to the you know the quadrangle of you know, urgent and important, let's do that. Well, yeah, I think we, you know, we can go back to, to Paul or the subcommittee and say we can't do it or we can only do part of it or, I mean, they'd ask us for our input. That's my view of the situation. So I personally, I think that we owe them a response. What the response is, is up to the committee, whatever we can collectively pull together or want to pull together, or that's the response we give them. I, uh, it doesn't have to be a positive response. It doesn't have to be negative. I mean, we, I think so long as we respond in some way, uh, we've done what's asked of us because we agreed to serve, and because of that, I think we owe them a response. Now, how, that respond, how somebody might judge it is that's another matter. Chris? Um, I, I, I it's unfortunate I didn't get a chance to speak before Fred left because I, I think if you haven't looked at the CDM report, you, you should because it, it does contain a lot of good information. But the other thing that we need to keep in mind as you look at it as a resource, um, and this was mentioned last time, but I think it really bears rediscussion, is that um, the CDM report contains within it discussion of the mandates that are upcoming, but it also contains within it a series of scenarios that that the city presented to. Um, the consultant as projects that we might undertake at some point in time, and these are major projects. I think we were talking about it last year, last week. The four of them, the order of magnitude was about 18 to 20 million dollars a pop. So you know, I think you can take the financial schedule that they devise that incorporates this and toss it out the window. It's 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 it, it's based on uh, hypothetical situations that don't that. I think we all recognize, and this is the sense of urgency thing. Right. They're not on it, and and so while I think it, it really informed me as to how you know stormwater and 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 the EPA and the mandates that are coming down really are going to have to guide the city's thinking in 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 the in the, in the near future. Um, that the, the report in its entirety, uh, there there are a number of pages you can you can shred. Uh, 
you know, I, I'm not going to go around the table and ask the people if they've read the report or not. The question I'll ask is, is should we have somebody come in and review that report for us at a meeting? Is, is that a, something that would be of value to everybody? Or has everybody around the table read it well enough that, that I mean, I, I, I can't answer that for the... Can I speak to that? Um, we're beyond, the city is beyond the CDM report. And the items that we wanted to discuss, staff wanted to discuss with the task force based on their charge, is really beyond the information the CDM has presented. So they, for example, in their report, they had presented one type of uh, rate structure. Uh, one type of rate structure. We're prepared to talk about three or four or whatever number of rate structures the task force wants to discuss. In terms of the budgets, we have moved on from the budgets and capital plans that they had in there to make a more realistic budget based on more accurate numbers, and that was the basis for, um, for Terry's presentation. So we have more up-to-date information to present. We have more specific information to present. Um, I do think there's good information in the CDM report, but I think the work that we need to do here is really beyond the stuff that's in there. So I, I hate to tell people to read a two-volume report if they don't have to. So. Yeah, but, but, but would it be helpful if we heard the steps that, that DPW has taken since then to see how, the, how they've gone along this path so, we, so there's an understanding of, okay, this report came out, there's been some thinking, reanalysis, whatever, and so this is where we've gotten to compared to that. Because there's obviously some, some concern around the table about that report, and, and we have this, uh, uh, Fred gave us his commentary on it. So he obviously feels pretty strongly about this. Yeah, so do we. we. We wish some parts of the report weren't published. Yeah, I, I understand <laughs> that, but, but, but the cat's out of the bag. We, you know, we can't do anything about that. I mean, it's out there, and people know about it, and, and uh, would it be helpful to have a, a short history of, okay, this came out, and the DPW has moved on from what was in that report to... Oh, well, that would be very helpful. I, in my opinion, that would be very helpful to, to different, differentiate between the report and what we're really thinking about down at the DPW. And if that's different now... I think it gets to people's question about seeing a longer-term budget, um, because there's a capital plan in the CDM report, and as Chris had stated, that's not really a real capital plan. It's nothing that's being considered. Certain certain elements, but the vast majority of the big projects were not being considered. Not so, one step beyond the sure. list. <laughs> so, I, I've been keeping an action log here of things as I've heard about it, and I thought we'd review it before we leave tonight. But, so I put down here, CDM report review and progress on it. And maybe we'll have Jim come next time and tell us, okay, this is where this report started us, and this is how things have moved along, and this is how we got to this point. And no, some of these things we're not going to do, or think we should do, or should never have been done, or whatever the case might be, and get us all to the same point. Is that a... That's fine. Yeah. I agree. And to Chris's point that he recognizes that these things we have moved on, if the public doesn't know that, yeah. it's not transparent anymore. Mm -hmm. Because they're still going by... As you said, you wish some of the things weren't published. Well, the public has access to this. <laughs> so if we're just catching up, the public's, we're the, we're the bumper here. We don't want to be the rear bumper. We want to be the front bumper. And so if the public is behind us, they're going to be continuing to get misinformation. We're going to have to battle. Yeah, that's, a good point. that's a good point. Uh, as you know, I'm, I, I believe in running meetings on a timely basis. And the agenda said we quit at 730. So I want to do a process check here and say, uh, is, is, are we all agreed we're going to go at 7.30, or do you want to extend it to, to 7.32 or 9.30, or what? what's your pleasure around the table? Well, item 6, which seemed like it was sort of the centerpiece of tonight, we never got to. We didn't get to. Um, I'm genuinely prepared to, to make a presentation of, of that information. Is, is that... A sizable chunk of time to do that, or, or, is, or is it handouts? Or? I guess it wasn't handouts. I was just going to speak to a couple of towns. Um, it's going to seem very anticlimactic to the other discussion, um, which is a lot more important than 
what I had to say about the uh, half a dozen uh, enterprise funds there in the city. So I guess I'm wondering, from my own perspective, I don't know how long people want to stay, but I am curious about agenda items for the next meeting in terms of where we go, because we've talked about the CDM report, we've talked about the budget, we've talked about certain things. If people want to stay a little bit longer, I, I'd be happy to go through a few of the notes that I have about uh, about the enterprise funds. I'm happy to do it. People want to do that. Um, or if you want to spend time working I'm, I'm on not sure we can, so I, we can prepare for that. I'm not sure we can do that, because if, if we do that on a private basis and not not everybody present, and then we got this meeting with all, did everybody hear it, and should they have heard it, and I'm a little nervous about <laughs> going off down that path, that uh, I'd rather postpone it or, or all of us stay late or whatever. Uh, but this, let's go to the next meeting agenda items. We said we'd create a log sheet, so when comes somebody comes in here, they'll sign up and put their email on it. Uh, there were some comments about that wanting to set the room up in a proper way. Uh, the reason we met in this room is because room 18 wasn't available in City Hall. And so this was the room I found. And, uh, and so it seems to me that from going forward, we need to get a room that will meet the criteria that Paul talked about. I think this room works fine, though. The, this, yeah. this the, room, the, the problem well, with this room... Doesn't, doesn't meet the standard that Paul put well, to we could, I We can rearrange it. it. We can rearrange tables. Table. Well, yeah. okay. but, but there but, is one problem with this room for me. I, with my disability, I can't walk far. If I can't get one of the handicapped spots out here or close parking, I have a real problem with getting here because I really have a problem walking. Well, yeah, I think we can so, get you... Uh, Handicap sticker. Certainly, the police oh, I have, can help I have you with that. Oh, I have handicap plates. I have handicap <laughs> yeah, plates. Yeah, we, we can help you with that. It's there is parking right out the door. I I I got third time around. Somebody pulled out, and I got one of the handicap spots. But if we, if we meet here again, we'll I can fix that. We can fix that problem for okay. you. That's that's an easy problem to fix. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's probably a cop around here to help you. Huh? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We we can. I think we can fix that. Uh, we have a, maybe a 10-year budget presentation or a glimpse of one. I thought that would go on the agenda next time. And then a review of the CDM report and the linkage to where we are now so we can hear the appreciation. Those are the topics that I saw coming out of this discussion. And then the enterprise And, and then discussion. we do the enterprise discussion. So that's my mental picture right now of what the agenda would be next time. Would it be possible to get some of the foundational building blocks that we're going to need, you know, the numbers of units and any, you know, impervious data, and I mean, start getting some of that so we have that available. You and know, as individuals to play around with it on, on our own to start developing some data. What, what I'd like to get, that report that you have, Emery, the one with all the, the number of units, yep. I think that's what you're talking about. I'd like to get a copy yeah, of that. I got if a we copy could. of this from the assessors of uh, the different categories of uh, uh, buildings and building lots in the town, what they're assessed for. And I got it because I wanted to know how many different entities were paying taxes. Yeah. So I'm sure we can get you a copy of this. I don't know if this one's a little bit messed up, so I just, I'll go get a better, cleaner copy. Yeah. Yeah. We can get, yeah. we can send, we, we have, you know, we, we've got information we can send to people. Probably more than you want. So you can, uh, can you post it on the website? We can. <laughs> and is there a summary anywhere of what other, of the formulas and the final, and what other towns have done? And you were going to talk a little bit about it. Can you just get it up and say, you know, Chicopee, you know, it's a $50, you know, per resident, $200 per business. They raise what they much. have up already, if you look at some There's of those reports, there. it does yeah. do a comparison of like Reading, South Burlington, mm -hmm. um, so Newton, I think. And, and then what's really nice is the takeaways, what they learned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're on there, I think. Okay. So we have, uh, I'll send some information to people and I can post it. We have a, uh, we, we wrote a, uh, a reference list for um, different enterprise funds that exist that will point you in the location where you can see some of this information. We can get some rate fee information out to people. We can get basic statistics from our Hampton out to people. I had also worked on a table, which I wanted to I wanted to distribute tonight, but I can email this to other people. And what it is, it's a list of seven, I mean, a list of 11 utility considerations, 
all the things that need to be considered when setting up a utility. And it comes from a document that we have. There's a bunch of stuff on the internet. I appreciate that people are actually reading things up there. But there's uh, this one here by the New England Environmental Finance Center. It's called Stormwater Utility Fees. If people have seen this one, there's a table in here, and I have modified it as it applies to North as it applies to Northampton. I'm going to email that table around to people, and I'm going to suggest that you read this document, which is pretty easy to read, and compare it to the table. And that will talk about, it's sort of a primer on different rate structures. I think Dan's ready to do the rate structure for me, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, there's, it's basically a primer, too, on variable rate, fixed fee rate, what's an equivalent residential unit, some of these terms, yep. other things that people are going to want to know are discussed in there, and then I have, the other thing that's good about the table is that when you read about certain decisions towns made, everybody makes a decision based on their ability to manage, some of it's based on your ability to manage data, your ability to get a certain type of bill out. These things you don't know, but we know because we deal with them every day. So I can tell you, you know, basically how we might be able to implement this, some nuts and boltsy kind of things that will get you a little bit further along. So I'll send that along to people and ask you to take a look at that. I think in order to get things done, when you're going to have to break into some kind of teams. And I think we could talk briefly now about what those teams might focus on and set them up at our very next meeting if we can't do it tonight. And one team would be looking at what other communities have done, both in Massachusetts and nationally, and a bunch of good information about that is on the website. But we should look at it ourselves, not rely on Jim to necessarily do all the legwork. It's a little group of us. I think we should also need to look at what kind of information the city has available to it, the kinds of information one might need to use, to create a variety of algorithms. Uh, so there are things that we can start breaking into small groups and work on and then report back to this committee. And that's going to be key to getting things done. I think there's a lot of things that the committee as a whole can get their arms around fairly readily. Um, I was going to talk about these enterprise ones and other communities, which I'll talk about next time. But one of the important things about that is you don't really need, need to know the details of what other people are doing until you get to the details of what you want to do. So, for example, if you want if you wanted a credit system, well, you'd make the decision, yes, we want a credit system. And then you could go to other communities that have them, and you can say these are the types of credits that people use. You can also come up with other things. Or if you want a variable rate structure, you can say, okay, we would like a variable rate structure in Northampton if that's what you want. And then we can say, well, these are the types of variable rate structures that people have used. And these are other ones that you could use because they haven't all been invented yet. They're, they're pretty straightforward to come up with with a basis. So I think what other towns have done is important. But once you decide what you want to do, then you would apply what other towns have done to see how it might work or not work for you. So there's sort of a process there, I think, in terms of using that information. And as a group, I, I, you know, I think you know, we can handle it. Uh, I was just looking at the, the agenda list here. I went over the action items pretty much. I think we've done that. We need to decide when are we going to meet again? Two weeks. Uh, both Dan and I are in a bind. I'm going to be coming back from Frankfurt, Germany on the 28th. So that's not going to be, I can't meet as chair, and Dan has another commitment as well. Now we can elect uh, uh, another. No, we should all be, we need all of us <laughs> yeah. to be there. Another vice chair, or or get somebody to lead the meeting. I I'm of the opinion no one is indispensable. I mean, committees can go forward with. I'm not available on the twenty eighth. How about the fourth of April? Three weeks. Beautiful. Wide open for me. I won't be here for that. Is that a Wednesday? Not the third. Thursday. So that's, that's a, not a council meeting? It is, because it's is three a weeks. Meeting. Right. Yeah. But we meet earlier, so we can still get them here. Well, yeah. do you want, and I guess, no, that's the next question. Let's let's not make the assumption we're going to meet at 5.30. Let's ask the question. Do you want to meet at 5.30? Do you want to meet at, at some other time? If we meet at 5.30, we can get the counselors here if they want to come. Yeah, I, I understand what we can do. Now, my question is, what do you want to do? 5.30. 5.30. Yeah. That's yeah. the question. Well, when we're saying here, I'm assuming we're somewhere. not actually. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. somewhere. Yeah. somewhere. Maybe closer yes. to the council. Uh, yeah. and, and if you had your druthers, would you rather meet here? Or would you rather meet in room 18 like we did before? I'd rather meet in the hearing room. Meeting, I think we, 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 
So you, if you could, you'd prefer to meet in City Hall where we did before. Okay, I'll, I'll try to schedule that room tomorrow as quickly as I can. So it's the 4th, it's at 5.30, it's in City Hall, presuming that the room is available. And if it isn't, is this acceptable as an alternative? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll just come early enough to find a parking space. Uh, incidentally, I don't know if any of you have used this room, but if you want to use it, you have to apply. Fill out an application form and get approved and uh, fingerprinted and the you're part of the name, police. The homeland security, so forth and so on. the police or the central services? You have to go to the police. Okay. That's what I was making sure. Yeah. Is there any anything else somebody wants to bring up? Ruth, would you send around a link to your <clears throat> that article that you and oh, I will. I move we adjourn. Uh, everybody agree? Yes. We're adjourned. Thank you.